What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again with the recent announcement of the new AMD 3000 series CPUs. I figured it was time to do my last 2000 series build. And in this video, we're gonna be using a 2700 non-X variant. And I opted for the 2700 instead of the 2700X because of the price. This is going for around $200 now on Amazon, eBay, and pretty much everywhere else. So I figured an eight core, 16 thread CPU is well worth that kind of money. But before we get into the parts list build and testing, I do want to give EVGA a big shout out for providing the GPU in this build. We're going to be using the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 XC Ultra. This is a great GPU. I know a lot of people have their qualms about the RTX series, but personally, I love them. I also want to thank Team Group for providing the RAM. We're using their Delta RGB 16GB kit, and they also provided their Delta R RGB 250GB SSD for this build. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I'll be giving this build away in an upcoming video, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. So let's go over the parts used in this build. For the CPU, we're using the AMD Ryzen 7 2700. We got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.2, and a boost of 4.1. This is a pretty awesome little CPU. They tend to get a little bit hot with the stock cooler, so I'm going to be going with an Arctic Freezer 33 CPU cooler. I have one of these in another rig, and I absolutely love these. You really can't beat it for the price. For the motherboard, we're going with a Gigabyte Aorus X470 Ultra Gaming. Now, these will be compatible with Ryzen 3000 when they're released, so if you do end up getting one of these rigs here, you can always upgrade down the road. And this is great for overclocking this 2700 like it sits. Like I mentioned, the RAM and SSD were provided by Team Group for this build. I'll be using the Delta RGB 16GB kit. This is rated at 3000 MHz, along with the Delta R RGB 250GB SSD. And to add a little more storage, I'm going to be throwing in a 1TB Toshiba 5400 RPM 2.5-inch mechanical drive. You can store your Steam games on here. And for the GPU, I'm going to be using the EVGA RTX 2080 XC Ultra. 2,944 CUDA cores, a boost clock of 1,815 MHz, and 8GB of GDDR6. This is a beastly GPU. I got a great deal on a couple of these a few weeks ago. These are certified refurbished from Corsair. This is the CX750M, 80 plus bronze, 750 watt, semi-modular power supply. And finally, for the case, we're using a Cooler Master Masterbox Q500L. Unfortunately, it does have an acrylic side panel and not tempered glass. When I initially bought this, I was under the impression that this was the tempered glass version, but I guess they haven't released it yet or they're not going to. But I do have to say, I really like the looks and the design of this case. It's much smaller than it actually looks. The case only came with a single rear fan, so I'll be adding three of these 120mm Arctic fans because we have 8 cores, 16 threads, and a 2080 in this small case. I'm pretty sure we can keep the whole system cool enough with these. I originally planned to do a full build video on this rig, but I've already done a build video in 2019. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description or just do a quick Google search. There are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of videos on how to build a PC. So this Arctic cooler came with some pre-applied thermal paste, but I just went ahead and wiped it off and I'm using Noctua NTH2. It's some great thermal compound. I use it in all of my rigs. This Cooler Master case is pretty small, and this is a full-size ATX motherboard, but luckily it does support many ITX, ATX, or full-size. Now, you will have to relocate the power supply, and that's one of the things I really like about this case. It's a very odd design, but it works out really well to keep everything super tidy and small. So as you can see, I got everything mounted in here except for the power supply, those three Arctic fans, and the SSD. Now the SSD usually goes in the back of the case, but I kind of wanted it to be visible because it's a nice little RGB SSD. Personally, I'm not a big RGB fan, but since we have an RGB SSD, why not show it off? And this is what I was talking about with the power supply. We got that CX750M. It's going to sit in the front. Now, it is going to block a little bit of airflow, but I do have that 120 millimeter fan on the bottom there, hopefully to suck in enough air. We're going to be pulling air in from the bottom, from the front, and blowing it out from the top and the rear. So after a little bit of cable management in the rear and adding the GPU, this is what we have. I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to be pulling the plastic off the side panel because I will be giving this PC away and I do not want it to get scratched. After all, it is acrylic. It's very easy to mess up. So building a rig like this isn't cheap. Total cost on all of this, prices from Amazon as of May 28, 2019. $1,440. I'll leave links for everything I used in the description. So all I need to do now is install Windows 10 Pro on the SSD and start testing. 
So here we are. Check out all those cores and threads here. We have that Ryzen 7 2700 at 3.2 gigahertz with a boost up to 1.4, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM, and of course the RTX 2080 GPU. So on paper, this is a hefty machine. This will have no trouble at all running pretty much any game, 1080p, ultra settings, a lot of the stuff's going to work great at 1440p, and some of the older titles will run over 60 at 4K. But some of the newer games are going to struggle at 4K and even some at 1440p ultra settings like Metro Exodus and Assassin's Creed Unity. I'm going to be testing everything here at 4K, 1440, and 1080. Before we get into the gaming test, I did run a few benchmarks. First up, we have 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. We scored a 4,602. Our CPU score was 3,243, and our graphics score was 4,970. It's saying that we're better than 60% of all results on the website. Next up was Firestrike Ultra, total score of 6,338, graphic score 6,227, Physic 17,984. Now keep in mind that all of these benchmarks and games were tested at the stock CPU speed and stock GPU speed. There's definitely some overclocking you can do with this system to get better performance. And this is one I test on every single device as long as I can run it. This is Geekbench 4. At the very top we have the 2700 versus the 2600, 2400G, and 2200G. Now obviously since we have more cores than any other CPU listed here, we got a higher multi-core score. And it looks like our single core score is right on par with the R5 2600. Next up was a quick blender rendering test. Now I'm just using the basic BMW test here. Lower is better. And when set up properly, rendering with blender will also use the thread. So as you can see, it's kind of trucking through here right now with all 16 threads going. I was able to finish this test in 1 minute and 2 seconds. And the final benchmark I ran was Cinebench R15. This also takes advantage of those extra threads. For the 2700, we scored a 1516. Now it's time to move on to some gaming. I've spent hours testing out a bunch of different games on here. I've recorded some footage from a few of them. I will have Afterburner listed up in the top left-hand corner, the name of the game, the settings I'm using, and in the bottom left hand corner, I'll display the average FPS for 1080p, 1440, and 4K.
Like I mentioned, I did test a bunch of games here. These are average FPS charts for 1080p, 1440, and 4K for each one of these games. I also monitored the power consumption from the wall. I'm using a kilowatt meter. Idle is 64 watts. 4K gaming is 330. And my extreme testing, which consists of running Prime 95 and Fire Strike at the same time, netted 418 watts. And finally, temperatures. Now this is the CPU temp. This is in Celsius. My ambient room temperature was 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23.333 degrees Celsius. Idle, 33 degrees Celsius, 4K gaming, 49 degrees Celsius, and in my extreme test, which is running Prime 95 for 20 minutes straight, I hit 64 degrees on the CPU. As for the GPU, I didn't mess around with any of the settings, and what this does is when it hits 75 degrees, it underclocks itself a little bit to 1890, and I never went over 75 with the GPU. So in the end, this is a pretty awesome setup. I do have one more video coming up. I want to test a bunch of emulators out on this thing, and then I'll be giving this away to one lucky viewer. I wish I had more, but unfortunately, this is already pretty expensive for me. So keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you turn notifications on, because I will have that giveaway video coming up soon. I just hit 250,000 subscribers, and I got a bunch of stuff that I want to put in this one. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or want to see anything else running on this rig, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.